Matthew 17, 14. When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. He is sore vexed. Oft times he falleth into the fire, oft into the water. I brought him to thy disciples. They could not cure him. Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. You know, Jesus, he just never cut people too much. He just didn't cut people much slack. I mean, he's just right to the point. I mean, he gets to the meat of the matter. You know, they could not do for this man and this boy what needed to be done. And the Lord just called them out. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? And then the Lord said, bring him hither to me. And then Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus saith unto them, because of your unbelief. Friends, I'll tell you what, there's, there, you, we, people, will, <laughs> excuse me, people wonder from time to time, why, why don't we have more miracles? Why don't we have more healings? We have healings, we have miracles, but why don't we have more? Well, it's because sometimes we've got a shaky believer. That's the issue. It's not that God is different. Than he's ever been. God, his, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, he just is. It's sometimes we get so caught up in distractions that, that affect our faith. Friends, if we're going to do anything, let our faith be strong. And you say, how do we have strong faith? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, by God speaking to us. Prayer is vital. It is essential. I'm not talking about just saying words. I'm talking about connecting with God and having worship take place because when that happens, it's not only you speaking to him. It's not only a one-way street. It's a two-way street, and you're receiving his word back to you. And when you hear God speak or, or when you recognize that he's speaking into your spirit, your faith just soars. And so, I, man, we've got to be prayers. We've got to be spirit prayers. So his disciples came to Jesus apart. Why could not we cast him out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed. I brought the mustard seeds out a while back and I showed you how tiny those little puppies were. I mean, they are just little bitty things. He's saying, if you got faith just like this little grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain... Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And listen to this. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Anybody want that kind of relationship with God? Where nothing is impossible unto God's people. And then verse 21, how be it this kind? He's talking about the spirit. Jump back to the spirit that was in the boy. He said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Again, verse 20, Jesus saith unto them, because of your unbelief, that's the reason this, could, did, this thing didn't happen. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. It's been said that there comes a moment in all Christian lives when we must stop talking to God about the mountains in our lives and start talking to the mountain about our God. I want to talk to you tonight on this subject, speaking to mountains. Lord, talk to us tonight. Lord, help me to do a quality job. Let us receive your word. Let it germinate in our spirits, God. Let us grow because of this word here tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. In our text, <clears throat> we find a mountain. 
It's a mountain that is uncontrollable. It's a mountain that has stolen peace and joy from this father and this son's lives. This man and son are truly in dire straits. What does this daddy do? He goes to the one in charge. I think that's always the proper thing. So often when we've got needs in our lives, we go to everybody but the one in charge. I'm talking about the one in ultimate charge. So often we want to explore every option available to us, and then as a last resort, we're saying, well, we better get to the Lord. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea if we started going to the Lord first. What do you think? So he goes to the one in charge, the one in authority, saying, I need your help in the removal of something stealing from us, something controlling us. You see, this daddy couldn't deal with this mountain on his own, and you will not be able to deal with spiritual mountains on your own either. I'm saying every spiritual mountain requires a God moment. And when this man leaned on God in flesh, God in flesh delivered this young man and his father from mountains that had been controlling their lives. History tells us missionary William Carey lived from 1761 to 1834. When he made up his mind to journey to India, many a wise man would have said, you may as well walk up to the Himalayan mountains and order them to be removed and cast into the sea. The man writing in response to the rhetoric said, that is perfectly true, this Hinduism is as vast and solid as those mountains, but we do have faith. Not much, yet we have faith as a grain of mustard seed. So William Carey said, I will go up to the mountain. Lonely and weak, he proceeded to walk toward that mountain which in the eye of man seemed to be one of the summits of all human things, far above all power to touch or shake. Yet with his own feeble voice, he began saying, Be thou removed. Be thou removed. And the world looked on him and laughed. A celebrated clergyman looking down from his high place in the Edinburgh Review was much amused with the spectacle of that poor man down in Bengal, thinking in his simple heart that he was going to disturb all of Hinduism. From his high place, he cast down a scalding word which he meant to fall as boiling lead used to fall on a poor man from the height of a tower. He called him a consecrated cobbler, a consecrated shoemaker. That's what this man called him. All the wise world laughed and and said he was treated as he should be treated. However, he went on saying to the mountain, Be thou removed. Be thou removed. Then to everyone's surprise, one person joined him in his efforts. Then Then another joined in. Carrie's voice then linked in time with many others and it grew ever stronger. It was then repeated in more languages than one. Be thou removed. I asked the living representatives of the very men who first smiled at this folly. What say ye now? Well, they answer. You have not gotten that mountain into the sea yet. That is true, but do you say the mountain during the last 40 years has not moved? No man can say it's in the same position it was when William Carey first began speaking to it. The mountain moved very little at first. Then it moved a little more quickly, and and now it is moving quite fast, And I called many others to swell that voice, the voice of God's church, which seems to say, be thou removed. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the depths of the sea. And cast into the depths of the sea it will be. 
And then a day will come when the nations of a regenerated East will write in letters of gold upon the first pages of their Christian history the name of the consecrated cobbler. After looking at India today, in the beginning there were a few Christians there. Today of the 1.5 billion who reside in India, 2.4% of the population are Christian. That means 36 million in India are now Christians. God's word has a word for each of us on this evening. If we will draw nigh to our God, he will in turn draw nigh to us. And in the process of drawing close, Our faith will grow. And as our faith grows, we should not think it strange to turn to any mountain in any form and begin speaking to it, saying, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would get their believer, hallelujah, out tonight and and start understanding with God all things are possible. Very often we believe certain, certain roadblocks standing before us to be impossible to go over, around, or through. We view things like financial mountains, job mountains, broken relationship mountains, heartbreak mountains. We view certain lost individuals as untouchable, unreachable for the kingdom of God. When Jesus himself said, There's nothing impossible unto us. And yet God's people still have to be willing, as was William Carey, and begin speaking to those mountains, commanding them to remove themselves. And again, we shall see what we desire to come to pass. Brother Sergeant, that sounds so silly, speaking to mountains, speaking to obstacles. I'm telling you what the Lord said to his church. I'm telling you what the Lord taught his closest, his his nearest friends. He said, you've got to speak to those mountains in your life. My exhortation on this evening is this, church of the living God, take heart. I'm telling you, Jesus himself has a word for each of us. With men, it is impossible, but not with our God. Come on, get your feelers up in the air and understand that that God is in the house tonight. That God walks with you. That God talks with you. That God directs you. That God encourages you. That he strengthens you. That he helps you to overcome. He is with you all way and he'll be with you all way even until the end of the world. So lift up your heads and be encouraged. What it all comes down to is this. Some of you are not going to understand this, but you hear me now. This is what it all comes down to, having a righteous stubbornness. I'm speaking of an attitude, a commitment to never, ever, 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 ever giving up on God, being willing and able to remove any mountain from our paths. That's if we approach that mountain in faith and begin speaking in faith to it and saying you will be removed you will be removed you're not going to have your own way in my life no greater is he that is in me and I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me your mountain is that broken relationship Begin speaking to that mountain. If that mountain is a backslidden child, every day speak to that mountain. If your mountain is a broken heart, 
begin speaking to that mountain. If it's an unforgiving spirit, if your mountain is financial, begin speaking to that mountain. Command your mountains to go in faith, believing. I'm telling them, you get, get after those mountains with your faith. Get after those mountains with a God that resides within you. You say, well, when is it going to go? The first time I pray, probably not. But it doesn't matter. You just keep at it. Every day I'm going to be back. Mountain, you've got to go in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus before me. The blood of Jesus is behind me. The blood of Jesus has me hedged in. Mountain, you're going to go in the name of the Lord Jesus. You've got to go. This is what the Lord directed me to do. So, so it's not just me coming against you. It's the Lord Jesus that is, that is backing me. It's the Almighty that is backing me. And so you've got to go in the name of Jesus. If it's not going the next day, you know what you're going to do the day after that? You're going to walk up to that mountain and say, Mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to be after you every single day of my life until I see it come to pass. Again, we must develop a righteous stubbornness. We must take on this attitude. I will not be deterred. I will not stagger. I will not stumble. I will keep at it until I begin seeing that mountain beginning to move. And even then I will keep at it until my mountain has ultimately been cast into the sea. Hallelujah. When said of obstacles of mountains, mountains have long represented problems to be solved. Crosses to carry, troubles to be triumphed over. In fact, mountains are problems. Death is a problem. Sickness is a mountain. Hardships are mountains. Family crises are mountains. Unpaid bills are mountains. Rebellious children are mountains. Whoremongering husbands and wives are mountains. Lying friends are mountains. Crack-addicted loved ones are mountains. I'm talking to you about mountains tonight that, that the Lord said if we'll get after those mountains, they're going to have to go. Scott Peck in his book, The Road Less Traveled, distills it all down by writing that life itself is a problem. You see, all lives encounter mountains. Some mountains are moved by the decisions we as people make, but the ones that seem insurmountable, these are the ones we must speak to in faith, believing. Again, church, it doesn't require much. It only requires faith as a grain of a mustard seed. However, if we have this faith, we can say to any mountain, Move from here to there, and it will have to obey. I'm preaching tonight about speaking to mountains. Anybody got any mountains? Hallelujah. If you don't have any mountains, you had not lived long enough, because I promise you they're on their way. You say, we don't have mountains in New Orleans. That's true. I'm not talking about physical mountains here. I'm talking about spiritual mountains. And I hear someone saying, but you just don't understand, Brother Sarton. I'm not Elijah who commanded angels. I'm not Daniel who went to the lion's den and came back, and, and, and he was victorious. I'm not David who fought a giant and rose above. And, and yes, these certainly had God with them. However, we today have God in us. And God in us is always more than enough. How many of you remember this song? My God is more than enough. He will supply all your need. He's my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Anybody remember that? 
All of the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, he is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, when by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He shall supply all my need. He's my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh, he is my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm preaching that you and I serve a God who made the mountains. I'm talking about the natural mountains. And I'm going to tell you something else. doesn't matter who made those problem mountains, God can remove them. He is experienced in dealing with mountains. Got to looking at the prophetic book of Zechariah today. It was written some 530 years before Jesus. The only prophetic book to follow this book would be the, prophet, the book of Malachi, and then would come the 400 silent years. I want us to go back and look at a timeline here. Solomon's temple was constructed a thousand years before Jesus. A thousand years. The temple was then destroyed in 586 B.C. by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. 538 B.C., the Jews were allowed to return to Jerusalem under Cyrus of Persia. Then came a man by the name of Zerubbabel to build a new temple to God. However, before the temple's completion, there came a new king by the name of Hystapes. He stopped the building of the temple for a season. And yet God had a word for Hystapes. We find this word in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Listen to this. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What's happening here is the Lord is encouraging Zerubbabel in the temple's construction by saying, this isn't about you. This is about me. You're leading the construction. However, I'm the one ultimately in control, and you will not be stopped. Verse 7 goes on to say, Who art thou, O great mountain? In other words, who do you think you are, Hystapes? trying to stop the work of the Lord. He continues on with, Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And exactly as the prophet said, Hystapes was slain by Darius I when he rose to power. And then we find, And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. And just as the prophecy came forth, the new temple was finished in 515 B.C. What I'm saying to you this evening is there's no mountain that can stand before God. It couldn't stand in Zechariah's day and, and there's no mountain of any sort that can stand before God's people in our day. Provided we speak to the mountains and command them to remove themselves and be cast into the sea. But again, church, this is the key. We must be righteously stubborn. 
Scripture says stubbornness is as iniquity. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And that's why I'm saying we need to be righteously stubborn. We need to be righteously stubborn. We need to be stubborn for the right reasons. We have to understand without equivocation that our God is greater than anything this world can bring our way. Our God is more powerful than anything this world can bring our way. Hallelujah. I just feel like we need to lift, get our feelers up in the air and say to the Lord, Lord, I'm thankful that you are with me. Lord, you are powerful beyond measure. You are omnipotent. I can do all things through you because your strength is within my life. I can do I can do all things through him. I can do all things through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I want to drive a landmark down here tonight. I want us to remember this service. I want to make a commitment to you here tonight. If you will, I'm talking about starting your prayer time tomorrow morning or whenever it is. If you will just make a list of the mountains that you want God to move. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, and, and you will go at those mountains. You will walk up to those mountains as William Carey did and said, Be thou removed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the blood of Jesus covers. Hallelujah. This desire that I have. Mountain, you're coming down. Mountain, you're going into the sea. I'm telling you, if we will remember this service in the future, we will come back a month from now, three months from now, a year from now, and we will say, I remember the day that I started speaking to the mountains that were in my life, and all of a sudden, they didn't move very much at first, but I kept at it, and they began moving. Hallelujah, let's stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am speaking tonight about, hallelujah, we've got to start speaking to our mountains. There are even times when we need to shout at our mountains. I'm telling you, shouting times are sometimes required. Shouting times denotes deep commitment. I'm talking about it, it denotes a fire in our belly. It denotes, it denotes something that, that actually is controlled by a high, higher power. When we get to shouting I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost gets stirred up. Listen to James chapter 5, verse 13. Any among you afflicted, let him pray. Any merry, let him sing psalm. Any sick, sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of what? The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. And I want to remind you here, this is not speaking about spilling our guts about every mistake we've ever made in life. This is speaking about putting pride to bed and admitting that we are limited and we need God. Then we find the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, I want, to give you some, I want to give you something that you need to hear. You've heard me say this a thousand times, but let's make it a thousand and one. Elias or Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he put his britches on one leg at a time just like we do. He didn't soar out of the bed in the morning time. He, he didn't have his angel's wings on. He was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. The point being, when we command mountains to remove and be passed, cast into the sea, what we're really doing is we're taking the bull by the horns under God and saying, you will submit to me under God's authority. You will be removed. You will 
yield. It might not happen all the way today, but it's going to happen somewhere in our future because we're going to wrestle every day until you're gone. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I have a question here. What is it in your life that you need to deal with under God here this evening? What is it in your life that you have to turn loose God to handle for you? I don't care how many pickaxes you've got in the garage. You cannot move a mountain in the flesh. But I'll tell you what you get in the spirit. And I'm telling you, that mountains, it begins to shake. It begins to, it begins to quake. That mountain, it begins to stagger and it begins to, to move. I'll never forget it when we were in the Philippines. We'd never been in an earthquake before. But friends, we had, I think, four of them in a short time. And one of them, we up in a seven-story building. That building is going doing this. And I'm saying, oh, God, let me get out of here. Now, we, we did our best to get out of there quickly, but we couldn't get out. That's what we need to happen in the spirit world where our mountains are concerned. But friends, you've got to be willing to take the bull by the horns. You've got to be willing to get into the arena. And you've got to deal with it. Say, I want this from God. I want that from God. If you want it bad enough every day of your life, you'll speak to that mountain. Mountain, it's it's Mike again. I'm here to let you know that we just warmed up. We were just we started we started warming up a week ago, but I'm going to be here every day, and, and I'm going to be using the blood of Jesus against you. I'm going to be using the name of Jesus against you. We're going to have a tussling match, a wrestling match every single day of my life. As long as I'm in this world, you and me, Mountain, we are going to wrestle. Because, but it's going to be okay because God is in support of what I'm doing. He told me to wrestle with you. And so I'm going to wrestle with you. Friends, I'm telling you, we need, we need the inspiration. We need the inspiration of determination. We need, the inspira- ins- we need that inspiration of saying, I will not back down. Who is that? That righteous stubbornness hallelujah so I want you to get it in your mind right now just get a few things in your mind right now we're going we're gonna to pray against mountains tonight before we leave we're going to practice a little bit on some mountains come on get it in your mind hallelujah some things that you want some mountains that you want to begin shaking that you're going to be dealing with on a regular basis from this night on well, get some things in your mind, one or two things. It doesn't even have to, it doesn't have to be a slew of things, just one or two things. Hallelujah. And I want us to lift our voices. And I want us to begin to come against those mountains right now. Hallelujah. Mountain of fear. Mountain of doubt. The Lord Jesus rebukes you. The Lord Jesus comes against you in the authority and in the power of the name that is above every name. Mountains of fear, mountains of doubt, you will be uprooted. You will be cast into the sea. Mountain, you will understand after this day that God is with what I'm doing. I come against you, mountain. I come against you on this day. The Lord Jesus himself rebukes you. The Lord Jesus himself commands you to take your hands over that situation. The Lord Jesus commands you to cease and desist. Hallelujah. Mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Lord, you know, hallelujah, what I'm praying about right now. I'm praying for that mountain to be to be removed and be cast into the sea. Lord, I want you to break that yoke. I want you to break that thing loose, Lord, from the earth. I want you to break that thing loose, God, and begin moving that, that mountain toward the sea. I pray it in the authority. I pray it in the power of the name of the Lord. Jesus, mount you hear my voice on this night. Mount you hear my voice on this night. You're going in the water. You're going in the water. You're going in the sea. 
God's hand. You're going in the sea. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, move every mountain.